Hey there everybody, Eric from Utter Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in my hands here, the Mossberg 590 shotgun. For me, my very first shotgun, I'm absolutely thrilled to have this in my hands. Now I've had this for a few weeks now, I've had the opportunity to bring it to the range a few times, and I bought this particular model for a very specific reason. Now the Mossberg 590 is tried and true for military, law enforcement, and enthusiasts alike. So for me to get my hands on this Mossberg, absolutely the perfect model for me for a number of reasons. This model for me is going to make the perfect middle ground between a couple of different genres. So between the sort of self home defense and a sport shooting shotgun right in the middle and we're going to get into that into some detail but overall some good features things that I think are very desirable and for somebody who's a novice this is going to work out very well. Now some of the things I'm going to talk about today I'm going to do my absolute best but premising this entire video by saying I am at this point definitely a novice. So this is a little bit more novice to novice, but at the same time, if you've stumbled across this video and you're a little more of that seasoned veteran, well, if there's anything I've learned from running my Outer Limitless YouTube channel, you guys have a whole bunch to add in some great comments. So do me a favor, leave some comments below. Maybe you can help aid in this conversation to give us a little more detail. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through this in a bunch of detail. Look at these overall features so I can tell you why this Mossberg in this particular model is the one for me and the reason why I chose it. And then beyond that, some range footage and some general overall impressions. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. So the Mossberg 590. Now this specific model, this is the Thunder Ranch Edition. If you look at the Mossberg 590, there are a whole bunch of different models in this particular 590 lineup. Now, why the Thunder Ranch edition? Well, first and foremost, what is Thunder Ranch? If you've ever seen Clint Smith, I bumped into Clint Smith uh, in videos and doing research because I really did start to research this particular 590 model. And when I did and started to learn about Clint Smith, well, I was pretty darn impressed. He is at this point in his career, a firearms instructor. He has his own training ranch, which is Thunder Ranch with his wife. And they do everything from detailed classes on all kinds of different firearms, tactical applications, home defense and self-defense applications, and all the way through handguns, uh, rifles, and in this case, shotguns. So for Clint Smith to put his name on the side of a firearm, it's actually a pretty big deal. But he designed this a very specific way, had some very specific things that worked out well for him. And in all reality, when I came across this, it checked a whole bunch of boxes. Now, the first thing I need to say is, well, self-defense. Do I really feel as though personally I need self-defense to the point where I need a self-defense shotgun? Well, I'm going to say I hope not. Bottom line is anytime you get yourself a home defense or self-defense weapon, you really hope you never truly have to use it. But the messed up part is at the same time, you want to use it, right? So when I buy a firearm, and in this case, a shotgun, I bought it with the ability to be not just home defense, but also being sport. I really wanted to straddle that middle ground. And I felt as though this particular 590 model was going to be that perfect middle ground right between tactical, home defense, but also sport capable. And then beyond that, a pump shotgun, reliable. I mean, the reality is first things first for me, trying to follow the compliance laws. And firearms can be tricky. They can lead you down different roads. It's not always exactly clear. And so when you try to configure a weapon that you think is going to be compliant, well, that can be a little bit tough. And I knew there was a little more leeway and flexibility with a pump versus a semi-automatic. So that was sort of desirable to me. And then beyond that, reliability, that's definitely huge. So the pump shotgun made a lot of sense. And then the overall size, this is an 18 inch barrel. So 18 inches being the uh, sort of shortest size that you can get away without running into some difficulty. And then beyond that, this is an 11 inch stock. So a little bit shorter than sort of your typical sport firearm, but at the same time, reasonably compact, at least as compact as I personally would care to go. So this really at that point made a lot of sense. Beyond that, 
The fact that it had some of this rail on the front where you could attach a light, that's working out very well for me. So having a light and a laser and sort of beefing this out a little bit. Now I have been thinking about some components that I want to add to this. I'm trying to go careful as to not make it too heavy, but at the same time, adding some extras to build it out a little bit, both for the self-defense situation, but also some of those sporting type of events. And so again, just going through some of the details, I mean, the overall length here, you can see roughly about 37 inches, uh, really from the back end of the stock all the way up to the tip of the barrel. Now, that's the first thing you can notice. This does have what's called a breacher barrel. So very interesting where this, you know, <laughs> I am never going to need to breach through a door. At least I don't think I'm going to need to. And I also don't anticipate having any situation where I really need to like take the muzzle, press this up against anything before I fire to allow the gases to escape and to really, you know, reduce potential damage inside my barrel or, you know, some sort of backfire or anything like that. So, I mean, that's the first thing is this does have the breacher barrel, which is, I don't know, like sort of like an unnecessary uh, luxury or feature, but it looks badass. Like, not that I need my shotgun to really look badass, to be badass, but when it looks badass, it's just cool. And, and, and you know, I like the way this looks. I like the way this has the Kuyu. So this is a licensed Kuyu uh, camouflage. This is their color Vias which I do like quite a bit. I'm a big fan of Kuyu products. And if you've never seen Kuyu, take a look. Uh, Kuyu is a very sort of like elite um, hunting and uh, outdoor adventure um, sort of brand, mostly deep mountain, like sheep hunting, um, you know, everything from literally like sheep and goats and, and big game. Kuyu is a brand where they are just elite. And I love this camo pattern. In fact, not only do I like this Vias pattern, and they also have their uh, Verde pattern, but you know, I wear a ton of their camouflage, and I've actually been making my T17 knives in a licensed Kuyu edition. So, you know, I greatly like their patterns. I love them. They're extremely effective camouflage patterns. Uh, but, you know, I've also been making knives that actually sort of fit that look and really blend in with the rest of all of the gear that I wear, which is really pretty cool. So when I saw this Thunder Ranch edition, when I saw the fact that it was in for a shotgun um, and, and sort of in that sort of sport range, a little bit shorter, a little more compact, you know, slightly shorter stock, uh, minimal size barrel without getting into difficulty and, you know, sort of going down a road I really didn't want to go into. You know, having that camouflage pattern, having the rail, I knew this was the one for me. Now, this is a five plus one uh, magazine, so five in the magazine, one in the chamber. Easy for me to, you know, really, if I want to load this up with six rounds. Now, theoretically, I do have the ability, if I want to, to add the additional uh, magazine length. I probably won't do that anytime soon. Um, honestly, I kind of like the way this looks uh, being stepped off and having the space here, um, you know, for that breacher barrel. It kind of just keeps a, a good tidy look, nice and clean, a uh, little more sporty. I do like it. Now, I'm going to kind of step in my own way here and say, well, I should also be worried about capacity. I should also be worried about performance. I should be worried about having the maximum number of rounds on me as possible. There is something to that. I get it. Um, but I'm still going to go back to the point where right now, I personally don't feel as though I need really self-defense. This is kind of more sport for me and enjoying the sport of firearms, enjoying working on my firearms, learning about them. So I'm kind of stepping into this. I'm going down this direction and I don't want to go too, too far past my comfort zone. So right now, this is just about perfect. Now, some further details on the Mossbergs. You do end up with your safety up on the top. So that works out just fine. Uh, another thing to point out in terms of this, now this is different from shotgun to shotgun, but underneath here, you'll notice, well, this here is kind of what locks your pump. So if I try to pump it right now, it's locked. 
but pressing that in, there you go. So working pretty well. And then once you get actually, uh, you know, one of your rounds in, then at that point you can continue to cycle through this. So this working out pretty nice. And I like the fact that it's right here, you know, take my trigger finger off, reach underneath, pull that back, no problem. Now, some of these parts are plastic. They can be swapped out for more premium parts with ease. So at some point, I will probably mess around with my safety. The other thing is, well, my trigger guard, that's also polymer. I would potentially like to swap that out for, uh, you know, metal, so a steel um, trigger guard there just to be a little more durable. But at the same time, the polymer is just fine. Not a big deal. But I do think that over time, the nice thing about this is, these Mossberg 590s do have a whole bunch of aftermarket support. And I do have some aftermarket products, as I mentioned, that I'm going to add to this, but hopefully not build it out too, too heavy. I'm going to add a little bit of capacity to this, so the ability to have some additional rounds. I actually am looking to also add, I would say, like the, uh, the, the barrel guard, so a, a heat shield. And mostly for two reasons. One, because this is still, even though it has some camouflage, quite black. Um, I do want to sort of break this up a little bit more, have a little less black, because black does show up uh, quite a bit, especially when you're trying to blend in. Um, but the other thing is, it just continues to add to that tactical look. So uh, having that uh, guard on here and that heat shield I think will be pretty cool without a ton of weight. And then I've been messing around with slings. Right now this is set up for a two-point sling. So you can see here up on the front of the magazine, I do have that sort of uh, uh, sling attachment there. And then also on the back end um, here on the uh, butt end. So a two-point sling, which I don't know. Uh, again, being a novice, it's, it's not working well for me. Um, and it's really inhibiting my ability to comfortably carry this, yet at the same time transition to the firing position. So I'm going to try a one-point sling, uh, see how that goes. I know there's pros and cons to everything, but might as well try it and learn. But other than that, I mean, very, very cool. I like, again, the idea that this is pretty easy to carry, uh, fairly compact. Actually, it does have a very nice front sight. So as you look at this here, it does have a nice bright red, and I believe they consider this to be fiber optic uh, front sight. Very easy to see. Now, this does not have any rear sights at this current time, so pretty much just sighting down here along the back side, down the barrel, and then towards that front sight. Uh, you know, I'm doing okay, doing a pretty good job. Uh, so far, having some mixed results, but generally uh, pretty good so far. And I know that it's something that with more practice will come in time. So with that said, let's turn it over, get a little look at this in the range, and then we'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. And so at this point, I've had an opportunity to get the 590 Thunder Ranch out to the range. And I have had the opportunity to shoot shotguns in the past. However, this being my first time owning one, well, it's kind of a different story. And so here you can see, working through it, my first time at the range, not the most comfortable, doing my best to properly mount, doing my best to get good quality aim at the targets down range, and using one out slugs. That's one of the things I really don't have the opportunity to use shot at the range. They require slugs as to not damage the equipment, and rightfully so. But you can see at times some mixed results, but pretty good overall. Now definitely something I need to get comfortable with, and I know over time I will gain proficiency. Now one thing that I know was definitely not the best it could have been was my mount. I felt as though I was shouldering the firearm a little bit out towards my bicep versus in more towards my chest. That is one thing that I found after shooting a bunch, I did develop a bruise, and it was really an indication to me that the gun was not mounted the best that it could be. And then beyond that, I felt as though I had overall decent sight picture. However, I do also think that even given these results, I could have done a little bit better to bring the firearm up a little bit higher, get a little bit more comfortable and a little less leaned over. But all things considered, not too bad for my first time out at the range. There you can see here, just a little bit of confusion. Really, at this point, feeling as though the gun had jammed, but it's just that the shell was a little bit stuck. So working at it here, finally figuring it out and getting it ejected. 
Now mounting the gun a second time, catching me by surprise, definitely had my face a little bit close to my hands. Not a big deal, but definitely something I need to keep an eye on. And that's the thing, from time to time, just getting a little bit more familiar with the shotgun, and I know I will improve with practice. And so working my way through a little bit of difficulty and a couple of missed shots, well, not too bad. The results are actually pretty decent. And so finishing things off my first time at the range, well, getting a little bit more confidence and definitely enjoying it. Absolutely fantastic to get this 590 out to the range for the first time. Really good to work through some of these issues, get a little bit of familiarity, and actually get some slugs out on target. Overall, mixed results, but definitely feeling pretty good about it overall. All right, we're gonna try that again. I'll load up again for you. Finger still on the receiver, pick up the firearm. But time and time again, staying at it and getting a number of shots on target, definitely feeling much better. But you can see here, a second session, getting out a second time, trying to make some adjustments. I'm trying to get ready for the next shot by lining in my sight picture a little bit quicker. Some better results this time around, definitely feeling more comfortable. Again, it's just a matter of comfort sometimes, getting a good feel for the firearm and figuring out what works for me. Mounting it a little bit tighter into my chest versus further out on my bicep, that definitely worked to my advantage. What are we doing now? Little uh, 20 yard shotgun bonus action here. Now here in a third session, definitely gaining a lot more experience and getting out to the range a third time, having the ability to really pay attention to my footage, looking at what I did well, looking at what I needed to improve, and really gaining a little bit better in terms of my overall sight picture. Now I know at this point I definitely have a lot of room to grow. I need to work on bringing the firearm closer to my face versus my face down to the firearm, but I know I am definitely making some vast improvements. And again, feeling a lot better about my comfort with this, mounting it more properly, getting my face in a little bit of a better position to properly cheek the firearm, and the results looking pretty good overall. Not perfect, but definitely acceptable for somebody who's fairly new at the shotgun. I'm definitely getting there. I can tell by my sights. I'm angled up just a little bit. I gotta bring the gun up to me a little bit more, but I'll take that, I'm learning. And so there you have it, some range time with the Mossberg 590. As you can see, I mean, not too bad for my first real go around. I mean, I've shot shotguns in the past. Um, I've actually done some skeet shooting and uh, trap shooting and pretty cool. Uh, I've actually done pretty well and I, I can't even tell you what gauge shotgun I fired. I feel like it was probably 20 gauge, but now getting the 12 gauge, well, that makes a big difference and especially shooting slugs. So those were one ounce slugs on the indoor range. I really don't have a choice. I can't shoot any shot that goes against their rules um, pretty much because of the uh, ability to potentially spray the equipment. So the slugs definitely having some punch. The first time I went to the range, I can tell you definitively, I was too far out on my arm, kind of more into my bicep and really caused a problem for me. Now learning and going through this and firing and getting practice and actually because of the bruising, realizing now that I needed to mount this closer in a little more on my chest and where my chest meets up with my shoulder, much better. And the next thing for me is learning some of that push-pull technique. So pulling back, um, you know, with my, my trigger hand, pushing forward on the forend, and really trying to gain a little more control. So I'm working on that. And next, bringing the firearm up to my eyesight instead of me coming down to it. That's gonna make a big difference. It's gonna hopefully improve my overall accuracy, but not a bad start. So having this shotgun in my hands, I greatly enjoy it. I am loving this Thunder Ranch edition of the Mossberg 590. If you are not familiar with Clint Smith and you enjoy shotguns, if you enjoy tactical shooting, if you enjoy vulgar, just high intensity stuff, go check out Clint Smith. Check out Thunder Ranch. I think you'll greatly enjoy it. If you're somebody looking for training, that would be a perfect place to go if you have the luxury to be able to do that. I know I would greatly enjoy it. But in the meantime, for me, 
Just getting my hands on this Mossberg 590 Thunder Ranch Edition, I am absolutely thrilled. And so moving forward, you're going to see a lot more of this as I continue to grow in firearms, as I continue to learn, get this out to the range, and build this out. So in upcoming videos, you will see kind of the iteration I'm going through with this. You're going to see a lot of field use, you're going to see this in different scenarios, and you're going to see me modifying this Hopefully not a ton, but enough to make it practical, build it out a little bit to get some more capacity and add some of the things to gain my overall sort of tactical look, tactical feel, and the ability for it to function the way that I want. And so if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless YouTube channel, which is my primary channel. It has everything from outdoor hiking, camping, backpacking, excursions, things like tent reviews, shelter reviews, sleep systems, everything from gear, knives, axes, you name it. If you like that type of stuff, do me a favor and check me out on Outer Limitless. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.